Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to everybody here, and good morning to those who might be watching online. Welcome to Redeemed Christian Fellowship. We are going to start our service as we always do. There's the lights, camera, and action. Uh, good to see all of you, and really happy that uh, people are watching online that maybe can't be here. Uh, keep, keep family members and friends in your prayers. There's a lot of junk going around, but as we talked about in communion, uh, Jesus has provided a way for our physical bodies to be healed. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start our service with tithes and offerings. So if you'd like an envelope to give, to bring your tithes and to give an offering, um, the ushers will get you an envelope. I'm going to read one of my favorite scriptures when we're talking about uh, tithes and offerings. It's 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19. And this is in the Amplified. Um, and it reads, As for the rich in this world, charge them not to be proud and arrogant and contemptuous of others, nor to set their hopes on uncertain riches, but on God, who richly and ceaselessly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Charge them to do good and to be rich in good works, to be liberal and generous of heart, ready to share with others in this way laying up for themselves the riches that endure forever as a uh, good foundation for the future that so that we may grasp that which is life indeed i absolutely love this scripture uh, there is an indication here right in the beginning that it's not rich being rich and being prosperous and being is not a problem for god it's what we focus on and money, and this is another conversation I had this morning, money can be very destructive. The love of money and the, and, the, and the seeking of money can be incredibly damaging to someone's life. God wants to prosper, and he has no problem prospering us. That's very biblical. The, 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 um, uh, yeah, amen. Sowing and reaping is a, is a law of, of prosperity. It's, it will always exist as long as the earth remains. What's that? Prosper, yeah, prosperous. He wants us to be prosperous. No, but <laughs> but as you see in this scripture, the focus is always on God. It is not on the things. It is not on the blessings. We seek God first, and His righteousness and everything we need will be provided for us. And that's why I love this scripture. It's not a problem being blessed. It's it, it, but it can be a problem if the money pulls you out away from the things of God and away from what God has put on your heart to do. Hallelujah. So, because giving is, is very good, and, it's a, and it can be a tremendous blessing to our lives. We know that we will certainly receive when we give, uh, but our sowing really should be with a desire to further the kingdom of God and to be a blessing for those who need, who need, who have, there's so many people who have needs, and I have no problem gaining, but that gain, and Rebecca and I are, are, are on the same page in this, we want to give. Yes. If we're gaining more, we want to give more. That's our hearts. And I believe that that's what the scriptures is, is, is steering us toward, is having a heart to be a giver and be a blessing. So as you're blessed, uh, be a giver and be a blessing to others. So let's pray over our offering. Father, we thank you and praise you. Father God, you are so good, so wonderful. You're such a good father. You have blessed us abundantly in just simply sending your son, not that that's simple, uh, but to die for us and to shed his blood for us so that we could live and in the abundant life that Jesus provided for, for us, uh, we just pray a blessing over this offering. We say bless the hands of everybody here. Provide for those who have need, Lord. Answer their prayers for those who are praying, Father, for increase. And we just thank you for uh, the furtherance of your kingdom to continue to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, we have a wonderful anointed guest speaker this morning. Uh, let's keep our hearts open to receive the word that uh, God has given to Monica this morning. Uh, I am always blessed when Monica teaches. I know she's got a good word for us, so I will turn this over to Monica. Praise God. Well, good morning. 
We doing good with sound? Everything's all right? Every, yeah, Danny's on the... Danny's got it. He's on it. He's on the ball. He is on the ball. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay. Well, you know, this is going to be fun. When Pastor, uh, he asked me to, to teach this Sunday since he would be gone. Of course, usually when he asks me to teach, I don't know uh, when he asks others, but when he asks me to teach, uh, and usually for the podcast, I always ask him, is there something specific you want me to teach, or you know, is it kind of a dealer's choice situation? Um, not that we're playing cards, but... Uh, <laughs> So he said, you know, let me, let me, let me think about that, because this was a few weeks ago. He said, let me think about that. And so eventually he, you know, we talked about it again. He said, well, what's, what's, the, what's, what's God put on your heart? And um, there were two things that I was going back and forth on and just seeking the Lord about. And uh, I said, you know what, waiting on the Lord. I think that's appropriate uh, right now. Um, so I'm going to be teaching on waiting on the Lord, specifically waiting on the Lord to deliver you during difficult times. Amen. And uh, one of the things that Pastor said to me is like, all right, have fun. So we're going to have fun. Amen. We're going to have fun this morning, right? Because we're family. I can, God is good. God is good. Let me pray first before we get into all the fun. Father God, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy, for your love, for your deliverance. Father God, thank you, Lord, that we can wait on you and expect you to move in our lives, no matter the situation. We just love you. We praise you. We thank you for the anointing. And we just give you all the praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what the, I think the, the, the etiquette is to keep your blazer closed right when you're standing, but I'm just like... Fashion is, fa fashion is, uh, what it, it's, uh, fashion is fluid, so I'm just going to, I'm more comfortable with this unbuttoned. Um, waiting on the Lord. First of all, waiting on the Lord is not, it's not always easy when you're waiting for him to deliver you, to deliver you from the situation. It's not, I'll, I'll, I'll admit. And waiting from the world's perspective, it doesn't always have, the same concept as waiting as it does in scripture definitely not because in the world it's more like uh, you know well we're just going to wait and see see what happens um, we're just going to wait and see if this works uh, you know there's there's no real hope or assurance that the situation that you're in is going to turn out good in your favor when you're waiting in the world right but for the christian for us as believers because we're all believers here the purpose of waiting is to wait on god and expect him to move on your behalf because that's what the word wait means to expect so let's let's go to uh, psalms 27 14. um this will be kind of our main text uh, main scripture i suppose and uh, this one's going to be out of the amplified classic I, I i took scriptures from different translations so whatever i'm reading i, I don't know what what translation i'm reading from from so uh but it's it's all scripture it's all good um, this one definitely is from the Amplified. Psalms 27, 14. Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage and let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. Poof. We can stop right there. Like Pastor would normally say, we can stop right there and have a party. No, <laughs> um, the word wait as I just said, here especially, it means to, to wait, to look eagerly for, to hope, to expect. You are looking eagerly for God to move. It isn't the idea of waiting like, like it is today, as in, you know, wait, just, would you just wait a second? Would you just hold on? You know, just wait, okay? It's not like you're waiting on someone to make a decision. You know, like if, it, I, I've, never, I've never had to, to wait on tables, but when you're waiting on someone to, to order their food, I'm sure, um, uh, uh, waiters and waitresses, what's the right, wait, wait person, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure they sometimes get impatient with folks when they're like, let's see, what am I going to eat today? And, you know, um, is this any good? What are your specials? Can you read the specials again? And I'm sure they get so impatient when they're waiting on folks to make a decision. And that's the thing. Waiting in the world has a very strong sense, a tinge maybe of impatience. But we don't have to be impatient while we're waiting on God to move, even though there's the temptation to do so. It's not that 
concept of impatience because Romans 15.4 says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, in other words, whatever was written in the scriptures before now, was written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. I love that, comfort of the scriptures, because the scriptures bring comfort. Yes? Amen. Hope here, the word hope here means expectation of good, joyful and confident expectation. It means confidence. It means faith. Expectation of good. It sounds a lot like waiting. Amen. Yeah? Um, it, it's not a, you know, oh, oh my gosh, I hope this works. <laughs> um, I, I'm not really sure about this. It might work. It might not. You know, like Pastor says, the uh, hope in, in the world, it, it's, it's more like wishful thinking. Right. You don't really know or maybe you don't even really believe that what you're hoping for is going to come to pass. Right. You really don't think that it's going to be turning out in your favor. Um, that's not what hope means in the scriptures. It's not a last-ditch effort throwing up a Hail Mary kind of situation. It is hopeful. It is, Lord, I know I'm expecting you to move. I know you're going to move. I'm looking eagerly for it. I'm confident in it. I have faith that you're going to move. It is a biblical hope that allows us to wait and expect God to move. Yeah? We got to start. I hope I'm not going to. Hey, we're having fun. We're family. I'm just going to say it. We got to start looking at our circumstances yeah. like Christians who believe what the scripture says about our circumstances. Yeah. Amen. I'm just, hey, I, I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself. But we got to stop seeing our circumstances like the world sees yeah. the circumstances with some impatient, last ditch Amen. effort, natural man, yeah. void of the Holy Ghost type of way. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm being nice. <laughs> So let me go back to Psalms 2714, uh, and I'm going to get another drink of water. Mm -hmm. Psalms 27 is a Psalm of David, okay? Um, he didn't write all the Psalms, but he wrote quite a bit. And one thing that we can learn from King David is that he knew how to encourage himself right. in the yeah. Lord. Yeah. He knew how to change his perspective yeah. in the midst of trouble, serious trouble. Bless you. Life-threatening kind of trouble and David knew how to encourage himself through all of it okay just an example is Psalms 42 5 this is a, a scripture that pastor uses a lot and um, it's an awesome scripture he says why are you cast down oh my inner self the soul which is the mind the will and the emotions why should you moan over me and be disquieted within me Hope in God and wait expectantly for him. For I shall yet praise him, my help and my God. God is your help. Yes, amen. Yeah? And that's David encouraging himself. He's telling his mind is willing to mo He's saying, shut up. Don't be so uneasy. Don't, 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 be, don't, don't speak over the circumstances. Because David knew in his heart that God would always deliver him, even if David got himself in those, some of those bad situations. And that's just the mercy of God. I mean, there, there's examples in, throughout the scriptures of, of men and women making mistakes, um, but God is still delivering them uh, through those mistakes. I mean, Abraham, when he said to Sarah, oh, tell everybody that you're my sister. You know, twice he did that. But God still delivered him from that mistake. So David, no matter what, he was facing, no matter how he got in those situations, he knew how yeah. to change his perspective yeah. and wait on yeah. God. Yeah. He's Amen. talking to himself. He's telling himself, don't be uneasy, don't be anxious, hope in God, wait yeah. for God to move. Yes. Now, we're probably not going to face those kinds of life-threatening situations that, that King David did. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope we don't. I mean, we, we, we're definitely going to face some situations, right? We're going we're gonna to face some struggles. Because as a Christian, the, the enemy is going to bring everything oh, he's got amen. to get you yeah. off right. your faith walk. Yep. Yep. He's yep. going to bring everything he's amen. got. But you know what? We've got more than everything he's got. Right. Amen. Right. We've got the comfort of the scriptures. Yes. Right? We have more than everything the devil has to try and come against us, right? And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. You know, like I, it's not, like I, like I first said, it's not always easy to wait on the Lord, especially when something suddenly comes at you and there's a, a situation, no matter how stressful or traumatic it may be, the natural man or woman, there's going to be some kind of reaction. There's going to be a, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? 
there's going to be that freak out moment, right? It's yeah. natural because we're still dealing with the natural person, you know, because yeah. we do live in these bodies. And so yeah. there are times when there's a, you know, a suddenly a, a situation and you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And God understands that. It's normal. You know why he understands that? Because of Jesus. He can relate to us yes. because of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Because of the God man. I don't have time to get into the whole God man uh, doctrine, but if you if you want it, folks on live stream, if you want, there's a book in the in the back in the in the bookstore that tells you all about the God man. So God understands that we're going to have a moment of freaking out and like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Get out of that. It's okay, but get out of it. Get out of that moment. Get your soul in the right place by doing what David did. Get your mind, get your will, get your emotions on the scriptures. Yes, Do what David did. Talk to yourself. Even, yes, even if you yes. got to say it out loud in front of people and they're like, yes. well, what is she saying? Yes. Do it anyway because we're supposed to act like we're saved, yeah? Yes. So that means that we're supposed to talk to ourselves, talk to our soul and yes, say, would you just, yeah. sh Monica, would you shut up? God's got this. Wait on God. Yes, Just hush your mind. Yep. Hush yourself. Yes. Hallelujah. Are we having fun? Yes. I'm having all kinds of fun. Yeah. Psalms 27, again, it's a psalm of David. We don't really know. Um, I, I, I didn't do a full study on, this, uh, on Psalms 27 as, as far as what he was. It's not really known what was going on when he was writing it, when he wrote it. Um, it's not known really when it was written, if, if, if uh, what King David was struggling with, if, even if he was struggling at the time. He may have written it later. We don't know. Um, so I'm not going to try to guess or theorize what was going on with him. But he was clearly struggling. There was a clear struggle when he was writing this. And I'm just going to skim through some of the, some of the verses here. Uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear or dread? The Lord is the refuge and stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So he's already like Amen. talking, who, who do I have to be afraid of? So you know that there's some fear presenting itself to him. But he's saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation. He is my refuge and stronghold. Who am I to be afraid? What am I to be afraid of? Though a host encamp against me, a host. Now, a host is not like a host or a hostess when you go to a restaurant and one person seating you. No, it's a host. It's an army coming against him. Though a host encamp against me, encamp, like they're setting up camp around him, right? Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war arise against me. Even then in this will I be confident. For in the day of trouble he will hide me in his shelter. Oh, my goodness. King David is going through some stuff right now. War is arising. People are coming against him. There is a day of trouble. And he's still saying, I will be confident. Yeah. Now my head will be lifted up above my enemies, plural, round about me. In his tent I will offer sacrifices and shouting of joy. Amen. He's praising God. <laughs> wow, what a concept. I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, have mercy and be gracious to me. It's okay to cry out to God. Yep. It's okay to cry. Okay? Yep. Don't cry in desperation and be like, oh, please. Ah. You can cry out to God, Lord, save me. Be gracious to me. Be merciful to me. If those are faith-filled cries, go for it. Cry all you want. Amen. I, used to, I used to be like, oh, I can't cry. I'm not going to cry. And now I'm like, I think, I think there's a jar uh, next to Jeremiah's tears. There's a jar of Monica's tears <laughs> right next to it. You know, a lot of times, though, when I cry, it's, it's more from a gratitude. You know, oh, my God, thank you, because you're so good. <laughs> That's how I cry. Um, very few times do I cry because, you know, there's a host encamping around, around me. Um, it goes on to say, you know, although my father and my mother have forsaken me, yet the Lord will take me up and adopt me as his child. We've all been adopted into sonship and daughtership. I'm not leaving the women, the women out. Sonship, daughtership, you know, it, it was, it was all, all humanity. Um, but my mother and father have forsaken me. That's what he's saying. Can you believe that? Check out verse 13 of Psalms 27. What would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living God? Cut it out. Yeah. 
and we end with Psalm, with uh, verse 14. Yeah. Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Brave. Be brave yeah. and of good courage and let your heart be Amen. stout. Amen. Let your heart be strong. Let it be sturdy. Let it be solid. Be courageous. Let your heart be enduring. Yes. Wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. Wait on the Lord. If I can do it, you can do it. Wait on the Lord. You can patiently wait, patiently wait on God to deliver you from whatever situation you are in. First and foremost, you can't be anxious. You can't get into fear. I, well, Monica, that's easier said than done. I know. I know. I know. Trust me, I know. These qualities, though, they will work against you. Anything that... Any thought, any feeling that, uh, anything that comes against you that exalts, ex I always have trouble saying exalts itself, elevates itself <laughs> above the truth of God's word, anything, it, it's, <clears throat> that's just going to work against you. It's going to bring fear, impatience, worry, doubt, doubt, uh, unbelief. It's going to bring all that emo uh, negative stuff that is not going to let you wait on God and expect him to move. Remember, Romans 15, 4 says that through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. We might expect. We might have faith. Amen. When you're impatient, there's no room for hope. There's no room for expectation. Because you're impatient. You're, you're freaking out. You're in fear. You're letting yourself get in fear. David, he didn't deny what was going on. He didn't deny that there was the host camp encamping about him. He didn't deny the war that was arising. He didn't deny that the enemies were coming. He didn't deny the circumstances. But what did he do? He said, I will still be confident. The Lord is my help. I will wait on God. Yep. Amen. Yes. Amen. There is a circumstance yes. presenting itself to you. There is a dire situation, perhaps. It's stressful. It's traumatic. Yep. There's n you, can, you can say, yeah, this is happening, but God. I am going to wait on God yes. to move. Amen. Yes. Amen. Ah, I hate the devil. Oh, yes. Amen. I hate him. Oh, I hate him. You can hate. You can hate the devil. It's okay. What did Pastor say last week when you're resisting the devil? When you're resisting the devil, it's not like, oh, leave me alone. I thought that was so hilarious when he said, that's not how you resist the devil. That's not how you no. talk to the devil. Hate him. That's it. My goodness. That's it. We, we, yeah. Sorry. No, I'm not sorry. No, you're not. Amen. I'm not sorry about hating the devil. No, not at all. Nope. Woo. Chomp. So, oh. Psalms, Philippians, I'm saying, <laughs> Philippians uh, 4. <laughs> Philippians 4. <clears throat> We're going to read 6 through 9. We're going to start in verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious. Okay. Okay. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, every circumstance and situation, everything, everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, not with agony, not with desperation, not with complaining, with thanksgiving, yes. continue to make your specific requests known to God. That's okay. That's why he's there. He's daddy. You go to daddy and you tell him you need help. You say, I need help with this. With this and that, there might be more than one thing going on. It's okay. Yep, yep. Amen. You say, Daddy, I need help. Oh, I, I need help. Verse 7, and the peace of God, this is after you've not been anxious. This is after you've, you've, you've presented your, your request to God with thanksgiving. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding. There, it doesn't make any sense, this peace. There's no logic. There's no. Re there. It doesn't make any sense that you should be so peaceful huh. in the midst of a storm. Yep, yep. Amen. Amen. But that's the peace of God. That's it. Amen. That's it. That peace which reassures the heart. That peace which transcends all understanding. That peace which stands guard over your heart and your mind. Yep. 
right. and your soul, yep. like David, yep. why art thou cast down on my soul? Yep. Hope thou in God. He's getting his soul in peace. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Because our heart can be at peace, yep. but so can your mind. Yep. Amen. But that peace which stands guard over your heart and minds in Christ Jesus is yours. It's yours. It's yours now. Right. It's yours right now. It's not going to be. It is now your peace. Amen. Mounting guard over your heart and mind. Yep, yep. Amen. Amen. That's good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Again, it may seem easier said than done, but I'm just reading the scriptures. That's it. Word. Do not be anxious or worried. <laughs> Amen. You know, you... you, you going back to that suddenly moment where there's just suddenly this situation and you're freaking out again because we're dealing with the natural person yep, yep. and uh, we're all works in progress and you know the, this is why we study the scripture so that we can exercise our faith yeah. and exercise waiting on God but when there's that moment and you're just your your mind your emotions are really overpowering mm -hmm. but check in with your heart what does your heart say? And then you just start saying, I'm not going to be anxious about this. Lord, you know what's going on. I'm just giving you this request. You know, I'm not going to be afraid of sudden fear or terror. When I lie down, my, my sleep will be sweet. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid of this situation. I'm just going to believe in you, Lord God. Keep your mind on the right things. I'm going to keep my mind on the right things. Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Finally, believers. That's us. Yep. Yes. We're believers in here. Finally, believers. This is Paul talking to whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word. Ooh, I like that. Trans yeah. uh, I think that's the amplified, the, the new amplified. And confirmed by God's word. So what does God's word say on the matter that you're going through? Amen. What is confirmed by God's word? Whatever is pure, wholesome, lovely, whatever brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good report, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things, center your mind on them, and implant them in your heart. Amen. The things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, as Paul is saying, practice these things in daily life. And God, who is the source of peace and well-being, will be with you. That reminds, that reminds me of, you know, whatsoever, uh, Romans 15, 4, whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning. Whatever was written in the scriptures is written for our learning. So that we, through patience and comfort of those scriptures, comfort of those things that were written aforetime, so that we can find comfort in the things that we have learned and received and heard and seen in the writings of Paul and everybody else who's written scripture. We, through patience and comfort of those scriptures, will find hope. Yep, yep, amen. amen. Practicing these things in daily life while you're waiting on the Lord will help your mind, your will, and emotions not to freak out and not to get in fear. There is almost always going to be a temptation to fear. A temptation to fear. Okay? A temptation to worry. A temptation to doubt that, that, that um, the situation's not going to turn out the way God's word says it's going to turn out. But the second you sense that, the second there's that thought that comes in, oh, that's not going to work out this time. It's not, oh, no, no, uh-uh. You're just, you're hoping for the wrong thing, honey, because, you know, God's not going to do it. You take that thought and you say, no, 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 uh-uh. In the name of Jesus, devil, I just rebuke that thought. I bind that thought in the name of Jesus. That's taking the thought captive. It's a temptation to fear. Don't fear. Don't get into fear. Don't yield to the temptation, right? Don't yield to it. Say, no, 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 uh, 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 devil, you're not going to take my family. Yep. Right. Amen. 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 And what do you do next? You follow that up with a scripture. Yep. That's taking the thought captive and bringing it into the obedience of Christ. It's yes. 2 yes. Corinthians 10, 5, yes. casting down imaginations yes. and, high, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Yes. You're bringing the thoughts into the obedience of the word and what Jesus did for all of us. He delivered us. He delivered our families. He healed us. He prospered us. This is all past tense because he did it already. Amen. Amen. Yep. Yep. Once you've taken that thought captive, 
you follow it up with a scripture. Yep. That's going to get you out of fear. That's going to get you out of worry. Yes. Yes, right. Fear not. There is nothing to fear. For I am with you, says the yes. Lord. Uh, do not look around you in terror and be dismayed. Oh, oh. Amen. For I am your God. Yep. I will strengthen and harden you yes. to difficulties. Yes. Uh, not harden like make you insensitive and make you rough around the edges. <laughs> Because I used to be a little insensitive and rough around the edges, but praise God. But he can strengthen you and toughen you up to the devil. Yes. Because we got to be tough on the yep. devil. Yep. Yep. we got to show him who's boss. we got to show him how strong we are because we got more than what he has to fight off everything he tries to come against us. That was uh, Isaiah 41.10, by the way. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, but it goes on. I will strengthen you and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. I will hold you up and retain you. And my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. Uh, uh, 41, uh, Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord, your God, will hold your right hand. I am the... Can you imagine? Stay home. Thank you, Jesus. He's holding my hand. Thank you, God. You're holding my hand. You're just walking me through. Da -da -da, walking me through. I'm just going to tiptoe through the tulips. He leads, he leads me beside still waters. He takes me to the path. He's just leading me with his right. Oh, I'm just going to rest. Thank you. I'm just going to wait on you. Was that Bugs Bunny? I'm just going to wait on you. Because <laughs> he holds you. He holds you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Amen. Amen. The word says to cast all your burdens on the Lord. All of it. Everything. Releasing the weight of it. For the Lord will sustain you. He will not allow you to be moved or to fail. That is uh, Psalms 55. That's how you wait on the Lord. That's how you fight the temptation to fear. That's how you take those thoughts captive that try to come in and tell you, try to convince you that you're not going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And if it seems like it's taking too long because you're looking at it through your little eyes and your little poo brain. I said poo. Oh, Winnie the poo, right? Because he's always talking about his little poo brain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it may seem like it's taking too long in the natural but keep waiting. Keep expecting. Keep yourself in the scriptures. Don't worry if you don't see any progress. You just wait on him because he sees the progress. His ways are higher than ours. Yeah, he's got the aerial view. He's got the satellite image, the Google satellite. He's got the satellite over the Google satellite. He knows what's going on. That's good. You may not see what's going on. He knows what's going on. He's got you. Yeah, yeah, don't worry if you don't see any progress. I love this next scripture, Isaiah 30, 18. Oh, my goodness. And therefore the Lord earnestly waits. The Lord waits? Amen. Therefore the Lord earnestly waits, expecting, looking, longing to be gracious to you. Therefore, he lifts himself up that he may have mercy on you and show loving kindness to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Right, yes, Blessed are all those who earnestly wait for him, who expect and look and long for him, for his favor, his victory, his love, his peace, his joy, and his matchless unbroken companionship. That's a lot that you're waiting for. Amen. But you're supposed to. Yep. Amen. Amen. Pastor once described that verse to me, and I never forgot it. It was many years ago um, where it says that the Lord earnestly waits, expecting, looking. He, he lifts himself up. It's, it's like he's lifting himself. I'm just going to, like, mimic him sitting on a throne. But God is lifting himself up off his throne, looking. Who can I be gracious to you? I'm just, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for somebody who's waiting and expecting me to move. Yep. Amen. And I'm going to show them the victory, the favor, the love, the peace, the joy, my yeah. matchless, unbroken companionship. That's what this verse means. Right. Amen. He's waiting to notice someone waiting on him. Right. Amen. There's a whole lot of waiting. <laughs> but he's expecting you to expect him. Amen. 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 Yep. Yep. Ooh. Yeah. Glory. 
So he can be gracious and mercif merciful to you to show you that he is a loving, caring, yes. peaceful, merciful God of justice. Justice. In other words, it's going to turn out right. Amen. Yes. He's a God of justice. Oh, Father God. The word says, blessed are those who earnestly wait for him, who expect and look and long for him. Victory, favor, joy, love, peace. But the temporary thought does not indicate that you're not waiting on God. Okay, all that means is there's a temptation to not be in faith. Don't give in to the temptation. You are in faith. Don't question it. Your heart knows. You know, your mind just needs to catch up to what your heart knows. Yes, amen. Amen. Again, going back to the moment of freaking out. Ah, your heart knows. Check in with your heart. Yes, amen. Like David, why art thou disquieted within me, soul? Hope thou in God. Mind, catch up to what we know yeah. that God is going to move. Yeah. 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 So don't be discouraged. Don't question your faith and be like, oh, my gosh, I'm not in faith anymore. Yes, you are. You just got a moment, you know, the, the, the enemy comes in with the darts, right? He comes in. No, it's not going to work out. Yes, yes, it is going to work out in the name of Jesus because the word of God says, and you quote the scriptures that you're believing God for. Yeah. If you're not getting in the scriptures, then, yeah, you're going to have a hard time waiting on God and expecting yeah. him to move because yeah. you don't, Amen. you know. Um, yeah, and so then it's going to be a lot easier for the devil to come in and convince you that it's not going to work out, and then he's got you, and he's and he trapped you and ensnared you. But, you know, God is still merciful. He will still deliver you, yep, yep, but yeah. he could deliver you a lot quicker right. if you just get in the Word, yep, word. if we stay in the Word. And even if you got to speak scriptures, you know, someone might be talking to you and saying, the say, you know, well, I don't know if it's going to work out. Well, we'll just wait and see. In the name of Jesus, the word of God says that I, I you know, I, 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 can, I can cast my cares upon the Lord for he cares for me and he watches over me. Yeah. He, he loves me and I'm just going to wait for him to move. You know, I, sometimes I got to say that out loud, right. even if the person hears me. I don't care. Yeah. Amen. I don't care. I'm, you know, if someone says, mm, I'm like, thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. God is good. God is merciful. Yeah, yeah. I don't care who they are. Uh -huh. If they don't believe in God, or if they, well, I, I do. That's yeah. all that matters. You oh, say, you know what? You say what you. That's why a lot of times I don't like to, I'm, you know, I don't like to talk about certain things until after, you know, I've got the testimony. Not because I don't believe God isn't going to work, but because I don't want all that noise. Amen. There's only a few people that I will talk to and say, you know, pray, hook up with me. And, and we're just going to believe God, and yeah. then it's, that's, that's all I'm focusing on right now. I'm keeping my mind centered on, on God's goodness and God's delivering power, and I'm waiting on him. But anyway, don't be discouraged. That's just, I don't know why I said that. But don't be discouraged and think that you're not in faith because there's a thought. Yeah? Just wait on God. Recognize the temptation. Take the biblical steps to fight those thoughts so that you can patiently wait on God. Yeah. Because Isaiah 40, 31 says, those who wait for the Lord who expect, look for, and hope in him shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. Be as attentive as you possibly can while you're waiting on God. Amen. If you have to stay off the news, stay off social media, Lord have mercy. <laughs> if you got to turn off the TV, and if you just have to look at your, at your I, I, have, I have another document here with just scriptures. You know, several weeks ago, Deborah did a podcast on uh, how to combat fear. And just listing a ton of scriptures on how to, how to combat fear. That really ministered to me at that time, and it still is. And I took a lot of those scriptures, and I put them in a Word document. And I'm not kidding. I'm just staring at these scriptures, and I'm just repeating them out loud over and over. And I, I'm not repeating them void of faith. You know, like Pastor says, the whole parakeet thing, if you just say something, you don't really understand it. I know that these scriptures, I have faith in these scriptures. I know that God's going to deliver me from the situation. But I'm just looking at these scriptures because I don't want those thoughts to come in and get me thinking, oh, uh-oh, it's not going to. No, it is going to work out in my favor because all things work together according, all things work together, all things work together for good according to his will. There's like all these scriptures coming at me. <laughs> so there's like a mashup of scriptures, but that's good. It's good the scriptures are coming at me and not negative thoughts. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. You know, be as attentive as you can. Pray in tongues, yes, because yeah. the, the praying in tongues is going to build up your spirit so that you can hear from the Holy Spirit yeah. and be guided by the yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. So pray in tongues. Stay in the Word. 
Again, if you've got to just be looking at the scriptures, in the name of Jesus, those are whatever. I mean, just, you know, just do that. If that's all you can do, again, turn off the TV. Turn off the, 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 the social media. Get some, get some AirPods in you or, or headphones, whatever you got. Listen to praise music. And that, if that's what it takes, I mean, that's what Jesus did. I mean, not with the AirPods, but he would... <laughs> He would get in a solitude. He, he, would, he would get by himself to wait on God, right? He would tell people, you know, uh, what, what did he do with Jairus' daughter when they were laughing at him? Because he said, oh, she's she not dead. She's sleeping. And they were laughing at him. And he's like, get out. He only kept the, 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 the inner circle in there because he knew that they were the ones that were going to hook up with him in faith. And if that's what you got to do, if that's what you got to do to wait on God, to expect him and get that deliverance that you need, then you got to do that. Because it could be a matter of life and death. Amen. Keep in constant fellowship with him, his word and the Holy Ghost. Those activities will build up your spirit so that when circumstances do arise and you've practiced these in daily life, like Paul said in Philippians 4, 9, it will make it easier for you to wait on God. This is something we should be always doing. We should always be waiting on God, not just when the circumstances, you know, come at, come at us. and <clears throat> We should always be waiting on God, Amen. no matter what. That way we're always prepared because the word says, be ready in season and out of season. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm done. I don't know how much time I have left or whatever, but I'm, I'm just, I'm done. I had fun. I hope you all did. And I'm just excited about what God's going to do. Yeah. Amen. Woo. Well, God bless you on live stream. We love you. Have a wonderful week. Stay dry today, <laughs> but enjoy the weather. Um, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.